Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 65. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for Chapter 7 or the PDFs, the uh, PowerPoints for Chapter 7, just click on the link directly below the video and scroll way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, in this video here, we want to talk about calculating a stock price at time t. Let's look at our model we've been using, the dividend growth model. Here's our price at time zero. If we know the current dividend and there's a constant growth rate, we can use this model or this. Now this is at time zero. What if you want to predict into the future? Can we use this model? Well, let's think about this. Time zero, as long as we know the next dividend, we just do r minus g. Uh-huh. Well, let's look ahead. By the way, these slides are at the very end. There's like a one slide for each, each um, math model we're using. Um, just as with time zero, but here we have time t. The price at time t is, well, of course, it's just the next dividend, right? So we have this. We, if we know dividend exactly at time t, we do 1 plus the growth rate, uh, and then that. Or we simply, if we know the dividend, one period ahead. So that's the concept here for this model. Anytime you know the dividend for the next period, you can use this model, whether it's at time t or time 0, like we saw here. Now let's look at an example. I'm going to go to slide 18, and then we'll do this over in Excel. Uh, XYZ company is expected to pay a dividend of 5 bucks next period, and dividends are expected to grow at 5% per year. The required return is 15%. Current price, well, we can do that. 5 bucks divided by uh, discount rate minus uh, constant growth rate, we get 50 bucks. And of course, as we mentioned, um, if it was selling for 51, we wouldn't buy. If it was selling for 49, we would. Now, we'll take this information. Right? And now we want to ask, what is the price expected to be in four years? Well, as we just uh, mentioned, is if we want to price at time four, we just need to figure out time five dividend, right? Now this five right here, that five is, oh, next period. So we already have D1, right? So there's D1. So we simply multiply it times the growth rate to the fourth exponent. 5 times 1.05 constant growth rate raised to the fourth. And that gives us what? It gives us D5. Once we know D5, we simply divide it by required return minus constant growth rate. And ding, 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 we have our stock price at time uh, 4 for us. Now let's go over to Excel. And I'm going to calculate this example here. We were given, we know, or we calculated previously the dividend at time 1 divided by r minus g. Now we need to figure out the dividend at time 5. Well, we know our dividend at time 1. So just like anything with a constant growth rate, right? 1 plus whatever that growth rate is. And in our case, we're going four periods into the future. Notice we start at 1, go 4 into the future. That's 5. There is our 5. We could then take, oh, next period's dividend, since we're trying to figure out the uh, price at time 4. Next period's dividend, D5, divided by required return discount rate minus the growth rate. And so there's our value. Now I want to go back over to uh, the PDFs and go to this next slide, number 20. Now, let's just take a look here. Here's our model for time 0. Next dividend divided by r minus g. Oh, and here's our model for time t. So it's always just go to the next dividend and then divide it by that. Well, let's break this apart. How do we get dividend at, dividend at time t plus 1? Well, we if we knew dividend at time t, right, we just 1 times g to get to the next period. Well, how do we get dividend at time t? Well, if we know dividend at time 1, we just do 1 plus g raised to the t, which is what we did over in Excel just a moment ago. But let's look at this right here. This little piece right here, that's multiplication in the numerator. If two things are multiplied in the numerator, we can break that apart. 
right? We could say D1 divided by R minus G and take that right there and simply multiply it times this. Well, let's take a closer look here. What in the world is that? Does that look familiar? That's just price at times zero. You mean price at times zero times one plus the growth rate raised to the T? Oh, that's how we can calculate it. That's an even easier way to calculate price at time t. This also assumes that, and it makes sense, because if we have constant growing dividends, right, that the stock then is value is based on this dividend growth rate. So that means also the stock value at any time t is based on that growth rate. All right, let's go over here. So the easier way to do this is simply to say uh, equals are we've already if we know price at time zero times one plus the growth rate and then we're going uh, four periods out we want it at that period so we simply exponent four oh the same answer so that one depends on the fact that we know price at time zero all right uh, a little bit more about the dividend growth model when we come back we'll talk about um, the dividend yield and the capital gained yield. All right, see you next video.